more statistics. Remember that you're really only looking for two things in all of statisticdom. And one of them was to see if there's a difference between group means, a significant difference. Significant, remember, means that somebody did some math on it. So when you're comparing two means and only two means, you're going to use a t-test. If you're going to if you're going to compare more than two means, you're going to use what we call an analysis of variance or an ANOVA, but that's a different video. So whenever you're going to compare two group means, you're going to use a t-test. T stands for two. Here is the overview for the t-tests. There's more than one. There's three types of t-tests. And the test is actually to see if there's a significant difference between the means. That's what we call a test of significance. The first test is what we're going to go over is the independent t-test. This one is the most popular by far. 95% of the time, uh, you're going to see a t-test or you're going to run a t-test. Independent means that each group is separate. They're unique. So whoever's in group A cannot be in group B and vice versa. The second one is a paired t-test. That's when you have what we call a repeated measure. There's only one group, but there's multiple measurements. There's two measurements. So whenever you think of a pre and a post test, that's when you should think of a paired t-test. And the last one is what we call a one-way t-test, also called a one-sample t-test. It compares a sample mean to a stated population mean. But we're going to go over these one at a time. Let's start with the king of the t-test, the independent t-test. Is there a significant difference between two independent group means? So two groups, one measurement. Back to the independent t-test again. I'm going to give you an example if there's a significant difference between two group means. Who runs faster, the boys or the girls? Okay. So two groups. One would be the boys, one would be the girls. And who runs faster, that's going to be your dependent variable. I'm going to go into that here in a minute. How fast they run is the DV. Okay. So we could change that example around from who runs faster, boys or girls, so we're not sure, to we could pick a side. We're going to say girls run faster than boys, and we would test that statement. There is a slight difference in the actual testing when you have examples where you pick one side or the other. But let's go back to the first example, who runs faster, boys or girls, we don't know. So when you're uncertain of the outcome, one could be less than, one could be greater than, that's what we call a two-tailed test, because we're not sure. But if you do pick a side, like this example, we pick girls are going to run faster than boys, therefore that makes it a one-tailed test. So when to use a one-tailed or a two-tailed test of significance, that's not always as easy as it sounds, but they're only used for t-tests only. The rest of the real tests out there, they always use the one-tailed test, right? All your F's and your R's and your tests for significance, everything except for the t-test is simply going to use a one-tailed test. Let's back it up here to this one. If you believe that one of the group means is going to be larger or smaller than the other one, that automatically makes it a one-tailed test. That's what we call directionality. If you're uncertain, if they're just not equal to, that's what we call a two-tailed test. Moving on to the paired t-test, also called a matched t-test or a matched pairs t-test, but it doesn't matter what you call it. Paired t-test. Paired t-test only has one group, but it has two measurements. The best example to explain when you would use a paired t-test is like a pretest and a post. Uh, an algebra teacher, she gives you a pretest for your algebra knowledge skills, the beginning of school. And then a semester later, she gives you a post-test. And then hopefully, your post-test scores will show improvement over your pre-test. So this one is a directional. Will post-test scores be greater than? So you saw the word greater than right in there. That makes this a one-tailed. Backing up here, the pre-test scores equal the post-test. You're not sure. Is it equal? Could they be greater than or less than? Or not? We're not sure there. So this one would be a two-tailed test. And since we picked a, a greater than, it's going to be a one-tailed test. But again, a paired t-test, one group. Everybody took the pre-test, everybody takes the post-test. Everybody takes everything, but there's only one group. So here's a second type of, of paired t-test. 
is Bear better at reducing the number of headaches than Tylenol? So look at it that way. Everybody's going to take the Bear aspirin and then count the number of headaches they've had. And then, you know, six months later, the same people are going to take Tylenol and count the number of headaches they've had and compare the two group means. This is a second pair T test. Again, there's only one group, but they, they each took the Bear and they each took the Tylenol. Right? Only one group, but it has two measurements. That's another way to think of a paired T test. Let's go to the one way T test. The one way T test. I like the other name better, the one sample T test. It kind of is self explanatory there. There's only one sample. But what it does is it compares a single sample mean to a population mean. Other words for population mean are a norm or a claim. Norm or a claim is the same thing as a population mean. Okay, here's an example of that. Do California teachers earn more than the average of all U.S. teachers? Okay, California is the little sample, and the population is all U.S. teachers. So you're comparing a sample mean to a stated mean. And this would be a one-tailed because you got the word more in there. A one-tailed test of significance. Let's do another one. Does the Walmart National City, right, that's a sample, sell more popsicles than the national average? I would think so. Again, there's your there's your individual, there's your sample mean is one Walmart, and the population is all Walmarts. T-tests, remember, are comparing two means. Here's a few important add-ons that you should know about T-tests. All three of them, independent, paired, in one way or one sample is that whatever is being physically measured is the dependent variable. Whatever is being physically measured is the DV. So the IV for all t-tests is group. Right? IV, independent variable. And dependent variable is DV. Uh, most of your tests have IVs and DVs. And with t-tests, you only got two groups. You're comparing two groups, two subgroups. So the word group becomes, you know, problematic because I'm calling a group within a group. So the IV is group, and there's two what we call levels or subgroups under the categorical variable called group. So your IV in a t-test is group with only two subgroups or levels. It's a categorical variable with only two possible subgroups. Let me give you some examples. The boys and girls who can run faster, the IV is group, and here are the levels, boys or girls. With the one-way ANOVA, right, you could have an IV called group, and the groups are the sample mean and the norm, right? So it'd be sample and population. Those are your two groups. The weird one is the paired t-test. It, it only has one group. Therefore, it really doesn't have any IVs. It's just got one group, so there is no IV for the paired t-test. But it has two separate measurements, and you kind of treat those two separate measurements like, like DVs. And without going into a long rant, you know, I will explain that in other videos. But that explains everything about the T-test for now. All we got to do is learn how to do them and interpret them. That's it. MGZ out.